Hi and welcome to Art Laughs with me, Verity Babs. Yes, I know we finally got a name for the series. In Art Laughs, I talk to comedians about their favourite works of art. Today I spoke to Rosie Jones about a poster on her wall and we also spoke about the dual identity of being both disabled and gay and about artists and comedians and storytellers having a biography or a backstory that we can hold on to. I'm here today with Rosie Jones. Rosie, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Rosie and um, I'm a comedian, writer, actor, eater. Basically, I love doing everything. So yeah, and I try to be funny. A lot of the time. (laughs) (laughs) And you have picked a poster for us to talk about today. Do you want to just introduce that? Yeah. So this poster, I moved house about a year ago. And I thought, I need a poster for my wall. And I found this. And I thought, yeah, that's a one. So it's a vintage lesbian pulp fiction cover. And it's, it's two ladies, one in a lovely red dress. She's my favourite. And one lay down beside her and it says, I prefer girls because I do, I do. (laughs) When you were moving to your new flat, it's interesting that having art in there was important to you. Is that something that you've grown up around or or something that you've sort of grown to like? I feel like my house with my parents have always liked that, but it's not, it's not always to my taste, Mm -hmm. really. It's lovely, but a bit older. And in the flat before last, I was renting. So I couldn't put anything on my Mm. walls. So I spent a year looking at four white walls. So as soon as I could move into a place where I could put art up, I thought, man, I'm doing it. And um, my, my sexuality is important to me. It's not all of me. Mm. But it's certainly a big part of me and uh, I'm proud of being gay and I've not always said that. Mm. There was a time in my life where I tried to pretend I didn't prefer girls. But now, age 30, I know who I am. I'm proud of who I am. I'm waking up every day, seeing that poster just makes me so happy that I came on this journey and I'm right here now. You're waking up every morning like, yep, I prefer girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But waking up going, am I still gay? Yeah, still gay. <laughs> Cracking on with the day. <laughs> and looking at the photo you've sent me, you've had 
it really beautifully framed as well. And I think we've all had, you know, teenage bedrooms where we've just blue tacked up bits from magazines and stuff. Yeah. And I think that's something that I found really marked me becoming yeah. an adult was I'm getting things framed and I'm hanging yeah. them up rather than yeah. taping them yeah. to the walls. Yeah. And there's something quite slick about that. And I guess especially given that it's a poster rather than a yeah. painting or a work of art that someone yeah. might know, I guess that adds a sort of it's very classy. The girl in the red dress, the woman in the red dress is very classy. Yeah, yeah. And um, I would love to track down that book because also I'm very fascinated about that era mm. when there was lesbians and gay people, but it was very underground and very secretive and I've clearly got a big imagination but I look at that poster and I think of a woman my age who probably hasn't told a single soul that she's gay and she's picked up this pulp fiction out of a little like bookstore in Soho and she's taking it home to read and for the first time she's like yeah I'm not alone mm. there's people like me in the world such a lovely image right yeah taking it home secret and then being like yes. oh this is yeah because there's a yeah. lot of artists at this time who are doing work about sexuality but potentially about sexuality in quite a hidden way so yeah you know we've since found out that lots of artists throughout history have been gay yeah. or have had yeah. same-sex lovers or been bisexual or, or, or yeah. been trans but at the time it's interesting looking at some people's work where maybe there are undertones of yeah. I'm suggesting it but I'm not yeah. saying it out loud. Yeah. So fascinating and I like researching that time a lot but mm. It always makes me feel so privileged that we now live in a world where, well, essentially, as a comedian, we are artists. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist who, with their work, can go out and say, hello, I'm Rosie, I'm gay, I'm disabled, I'm proud of who I am. And luckily, no one's ever been negative towards me. That's always been celebrated in my work mm. which is incredible and I've seen you perform and you speak about your sexuality in your work and I think that's something that's really incredible to see because I think a lot of the time almost as a combination of being both gay and disabled there's this idea that disabled people aren't sexual beings or this idea that that you know someone who is gay is a white man yeah and yeah and so I think you really do a lot in your work to yeah. show that these two things coexist in different ways yeah. than we imagine yeah yeah and that is probably my main force in doing this and doing comedy because growing up I had sexual feelings and thoughts between towards women but I honestly thought 
no, I'm not, I'm not gay, I'm disabled. And I thought that it sounds ridiculous now, but I thought that because I never saw a disabled person on the telly or in real life really talking about sex or who they fancy or having a sexual preference all disabled people in the media always seem to be like asexual Mm. so i found it so confusing going well it found uh, the disabled one how could i also be the gay one (laughs) Like, that is too much to take on. But actually, as I say, growing up, I understood myself more. And I I found out that I was happiest when I said, hello, I'm disabled and I'm gay. And then that evolved even further when I realised that if I have those feelings, there's other people out there that have the same feelings as me. So that is why I decided to talk about it in my comedy, to go, this is me, this is my angle in life. For two, two reasons. Firstly, I want able, able-bodied people to know that disabled people are sexual and flawed and complex. But also, I'm doing it for disabled people who might be gay, who might be straight, but hopefully they can watch me and go, oh, thank you, I'm not alone. I wanted to ask you about, obviously in your writing and your acting and your, and your comedy, that these are primarily words based as an art form. And I suppose that with acting, there is visual things that come with it. But do you consume visual art at all in your sort of day-to-day i love that i really do but i think my main passion in life is reading Mm. literature so i mean i'm very busy at work writing with my job so if I ever get downtime, I think I choose reading in a park over an art gallery. But saying that, I still love art. I love art because everyone has a different opinion. And you can look at something and go, I like that. I don't know why, but I like it. So I think as I get older, I am buying more art. And I'm 
for me, I'm so lucky because um, I got friends who make art and I was actually going to bring this. I got my friend Tom who's made me a piece of modern art and it's on top of my bed and uh, it's so abstract. A, I love it. I love how abstract it is. I love the colours. But more than the painting itself, what I love is my friend Tom made that and when he was creating it, he knew he was making it for me. Mm. So I love art, but mainly for the process and why the artist has made what they have. Exactly, and I think that people are more interested in artists when they know the backstory or you know people like Van Gogh who have this really interesting backstory we love his work probably more because we know about the era and 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 him never selling a painting while he was alive and this kind of thing and and that's why I think that also comes into comedy and things is that someone can have amazing jokes and amazing stories but if they don't give any idea of who they are or why is this person That's to them. It. I think yeah. that sort of it can probably be a massive pressure to a comedian to reveal yeah. everything about your life on stage yeah. and to not really have yeah. a private life. But I suppose yeah. part of the art form requires you to be someone that people know and trust, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. But even that is someone's opinion. Mm. There's some great, great comedians like Tim Vine, uh, Gary Delaney, Jimmy Carr, actually. And their whole thing is one liners. Yeah. One liners joke, move on. They are so popular. People love them. For me, no, because I could get to the end of a Tim Bain show and I'd be like, but who are you? <laughs> And that's what I want from art and from comedy. But some people are just like, no, I just want to laugh. I just want to say a nice thing and move on. Hmm. But yeah, I'm like you. I need a story and I need to even if I just know a version of that person I need to know something about them. Rosie thank you so much for talking to me today uh, could you let us know where we can follow you hear from you keep up to date with what you're up yeah. to? Follow the hell out of me on Twitter, on Instagram. I'm at Josie Rones, <laughs> which is very confusing. <laughs> and now I regret it, but it's Rosie Jones with the J and the R swapped over. <laughs> Ha, <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today, Rosie. Thank you. That was so lovely. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. You can follow Rosie in the ways written below. And as per usual, you can follow me at Verity Babs Art on Instagram. Please do give this video a like, a comment, a share, and remember to subscribe. And I will see you next time.